Hi everybody, you're watching It's Lit with Brit and Wit. I'm Amanda Whitaker. And I'm Brittany Boyer. And this past weekend, the ASU Sun Devils just had their first win in Corvallis since 2005. Brittany, can you give us a little rundown about what we saw this past weekend in Corvallis? Yeah, well this weekend we saw that ASU was able to really move the ball down the field. They were able to have an effective run game, which is something that is hit or miss a lot of times. And it's also hit or miss with defense. I mean, they were had a little more uh, in the penalty column this this last yeah, game, seven penalties, seven penalties seven. which is more than they normally have. But you know, we did see an improvement in Arizona State's performance on the field. Now, a lot of people were upset that they allowed Oregon to score 24. It was a 40-24 victory, but. I mean, realistically looking at it, it was a great game. I mean, the Sun Devils, like we said, hadn't won there in 12 years. Oregon State had won the last six of nine games. Um, but really, it was a good showing by the Sun Devils. And I mean, looking at how U of A did against Oregon State last week, so, well, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, yeah. Um, U of A won 49-29. So they still allowed Oregon State to score quite a few. And for having such an explosive offense that they like to brag about, they really <laughs> they really could have done better if that's what they want to talk about. Yeah, and you know, last week going into the Oregon State game, mm -hmm. you and I talked about a bit about how we thought that it was going to be a closer game against mm -hmm. Oregon State than we most did. people thought because going into the game, Oregon State was one and nine. And you know, it was a pretty big gap in the first half the Sun Devils had a ginormous lead and then yeah. in the second half they started to allow more touchdowns they did they did but they also kept their momentum going that's the thing they didn't completely shut down on offense so ASU was able to keep scoring keep moving the ball and um, it worked for them and I like how you worked. talked about them running the ball a lot mm -hmm. and this is something that we've said they need to utilize more and going into this game against U of A this weekend I mean, Khalil Tate, he runs the ball a lot. Yeah. And so I think ASU is going to need to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, this past weekend, both Kalen Bellage and Demario Richard had over 100 rushing yards. It was Demario Richard's third straight game with over 100 rushing yards, the so 12th of his career. He had three touchdowns in the game, so it was a big game for him. And you got to also look at what Kalen Bellage did. Um, Manny Wilkins was passing the ball like crazy. Uh, Curtis Hodges had his first touchdown of his NCAA career. So, you know, it was it was a good game for the Sun Devils. Yeah, and you know, um, U of A is leading for interceptions right now, mm -hmm. and they just lost against Oregon this past weekend. Well, so, coming off of those two things, what do you think we can see going into the game this week? Well, crazy thing I actually want to touch on with you mentioning that U of A leads the Pac-12 interceptions, they're also dead last in the Pac-12 for red zone defense. So they lead for interceptions, but dead last in the Pac-12 for red zone defense. So it's a crazy stat, but I do also want to touch on Manny Wilkins. He was the first quarterback in ASU history to have 11 games in a row with five or less interceptions. So that is a huge feat huge for Manny, for Manny Wilkins. Wilkins, who's yeah. had a lot of questions surrounding and, him this season. Yes, and ASU only had four plays, four rushing plays last game, four negative yards. One was when Manny got sacked, and the other three were kneeling the ball down at the end of the game to seal the win. So they performed way better than they did at the beginning of the year. We've seen an exponential growth in their performance. The only problem is with consistency. I said it before, it's almost like you don't know what team you're gonna get. It's like it's a, somebody with split personality disorder. Are you gonna get <laughs> are you gonna get them or their alter ego? Is it Eminem or Slim Shady? Which one is it? That's kind of how it is with the football team. So you how do you think these team. two teams are gonna match up this week? I think it's gonna be a good matchup. Honestly, you have to look at the two teams and what team is stronger. All around is an all around well-rounded team, Arizona State is the better team. But if you're gonna look at who has a stronger I don't want to say a stronger offense, but Arizona really is going to rely a lot on Khalil Tate. Khalil Tate yeah. carries them. And as we can see, Oregon shut Khalil Tate down. They allowed him for only – he only had 32 ASU's yards. ASU's defense can do that too. Yes. And they got a chance. They got a strong they chance. They do. They do. Oregon showed Arizona State exactly what's capable when you shut Khalil Tate down. Oregon held Khalil Tate to only 32 yards on 14 carries on Saturday, which was crazy. And, you know, I watched that game, and it almost felt like they had a rivalry which was crazy to me, but they helped them. Well, I think the competition is 
getting more real as it they is. approach the end of the season. This is the last season game it this is. week. And like some of the guys said today after practice, they were saying that every game this season has led up to this game. This mm -hmm. is the game that counts, especially it is the game for that these counts. guys. This is the territorial cup for it is. <laughs> it is. In the last four years, the home team has won the matchup. So in 2014, the, the Wildcats won in Tucson. 2015, ASU won in Tempe. It was really, it really happened in the fourth quarter back in that 2015 year. It was very lackluster, and ASU just came out in the fourth quarter and was explosive. Then it, we, a lot of us remember last year's game, Arizona State went to Tucson, and just, it was a very upsetting performance, especially in the second half. They just came out so flat, and so this year, Arizona State is really hoping to be able yeah. to perform again, and... And hold on to that territorial yeah. cup. Well, they want to bring it home. U of A has the cup right now. So oh, sorry, Arizona I you State. Said U of A. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Arizona State wants to bring the cup That's home. That's what I meant. Yeah, U of A wants to hold on to that cup. They do. And you know, um, Arizona fans and ASU fans may think that this is just going to be strictly a rivalry game, and it's going to be intense and it's much more than just a rivalry is gonna game. It's going to be peaking, but you know, these guys they gotta they gotta keep that in the back of their mind that they gotta remember they gotta play clean mm -hmm. too. I mean, we spoke with Chase Lucas, who's known for how competitive he is and how intense he can be. And he said, like, yeah, he has some friends on the team, mm -hmm. too. And, you know, you can't go out there and be having flags thrown and having the refs holding you back. Yeah, he said he wasn't going to give the refs any reason to throw a flag on him this week. Last week, he had a taunting call. He was waving his finger in the face <laughs> at, of the Oregon State player. It's very and Chase Lucas of him. It, very, it really is. But uh, you, can't, you can't look him in the eye when you're doing it. You can walk away and do it, but he looked him in the eye, made eye contact, and that was his issue. So he said he's not going to give them a reason to call any penalties against him. So yeah. we'll see how he performs. And especially in a game like this where mm -hmm. tensions are high, you don't want to have anybody questioning mm -mm. like why you won. No, you know? know, and it's going to be a high energy game. You know, the Territorial Cup is the oldest rivalry in uh, football, actually. It, a lot of people don't know that. It dates all the way back to 1899 when the Arizona State Normals went down to Tucson and defeated the Arizona Wildcats 11-2. to Brittany, we can always count on you for the most random facts about it's ASU not football. It's not random. It's not random. But That's she, how it begins. She, you know everything. I do. She is like the ASU football guru. She knows facts from before <laughs> she was born. So, actually, let's let's go for a little flashback. So, yeah. that was when the, the rivalry very first began. And they didn't play every year when it, after they had first met in 1899. Now, the rivalry really heated up in 1958. Prop 200 was going to be voted on about making Arizona State an official Prop university. 200, huh? Prop 200. Okay. okay. So they were <laughs> they were really upset because the University of Arizona wanted to remain the only university in the state. They even I, when I was here with Frank Urban a couple weeks ago and I interviewed him, he said that they had came on the field and burned no on Prop 200. U of, a did this. U of A did that. U of A students did because they did not want the proposition to pass. They wanted to remain the only university in the state, and I don't know if it was because they wanted more funding or what they thought the difference would be, but they wanted to be the only university in the state. So, however, Prop 200 did pass, and shortly after that, um, ASU whooped U of A that year in football. Oh, I believe it. And so, since Arizona State has become an official university. They actually lead the series 31-26 uh, and one tie. But overall, wow. if you're looking at it since the beginning in 1899, Arizona leads it 49-40 with one tie. I think this is going to be a good game, Brittany. I think it's going to be closer than a lot of people expect. And I think the Sun Devils are going to give these people what they want this weekend. They are. It's, it's a good show. It's going to be an exciting game. It's going to be a packed stadium. A lot of people Absolutely. come back to the – Valley for Thanksgiving weekend. It's a rivalry game. If you're in Tucson, you're in Phoenix, there's nothing to do. You're going to go to this game. Yeah, and if you are going to the game, don't forget to wear gold. It is gold. And kickoff time is set for 2.30. It's an earlier game. It's probably one of the best yeah. game times we've had. Um, but, you know, no one's ever happy with the game time, so. No, but it's also, it's yeah. probably one of the best game times that this Territorial Cup game has I had. I agree with you. Whether it be in uh, Tempe or in Tucson, that's a great game time. You can't ask for better kickoff time. Here's how I look at it kickoff time-wise. It's enough time to go out before the game, enjoy yourself, 
get to the game on time, enjoy the whole game, stay <laughs> for it, and then still have time to go out afterwards, spend time with your family, because it is Thanksgiving that weekend. That sounds like the perfect time. It does sound like the perfect time. Thank <laughs> you. So, yeah, make sure you don't miss it. Um, it's going to be senior night, so a lot of the seniors are going to be saying goodbye to Sun Devil Stadium. They're yeah, the field. emotions are definitely high amongst a lot of the seniors this week. It's their last game with mm -hmm. the other guys, and for some of them, their last game ever. Yeah, DJ Calhoun had talked to us about how he says he's just an emotional guy, and he's definitely going to be crying. He said he would cry anyways, but he's just emotional, and it's going to mean yeah. even more that their senior night is against U of A at home. So this is this is what sports is all about. It you really know, those is. tensions high, a lot of emotion moments. Those feel good moments too. Yeah. So make sure you don't miss it. It's going to be on Pac-12 Network. Kickoff time, like we said, is at 2:30. Uh, so thank you for watching. It's lit with Britton Witt. I'm Brittany Boyer, and I'm Amanda Whitaker. Thanks for joining us.